Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. Now today I was supposed to be doing a Blackburn vs Liverpool preview, but I think we'll park that for now because as I'm sure you'll know, uh, if you've been spending a day on Twitter like I have, uh, Liverpool have made a £62 million bid for Roma goalkeeper Alison Becker. Now, this has been going on forever. Uh, this whole, are we interested, are we not? There's been talk that Karras was going to be number one still. There's talk that Danny Warb was going to be number one. We've been linked with Sillison, Butland, Pope, um, dozens of other goalkeepers. But the one that's always remained a constant uh, is Alison Becker. Um, him and Gianno Black, I suppose, as well. But mainly Alison Becker um, in terms of who all Liverpool fans want, in terms of who Jürgen Klopp wants, and in terms of who we've been linked with the whole time really um, it did kind of look as though it was dead you know us kind of not liking the asking price that Romo was setting um, but we have made a bid and that this is not in doubt I mean every single outlet is confirming this apart from Sky Sports for whatever reason but um, it started off with um, Fabrizio Romano and Gianluca Di Marzio um, who said that, that the move was close and that Liverpool have made a bid. Then it started coming out, your Bascoms, your Pierces, um, your Dominic Kings, uh, your Neil Joneses, you know, all, all the all, all the standard guys. So it is it is there in writing. Liverpool have made a £62 million bid. Apparently it's 53 uh, with £9 million in add-ons. So there you go. Um, wow. We are now the favourites to sign him. We were strong favourites earlier earlier in the day, very strong favourites at um, sort of one to five or something. We're now back into one to two, looking at the bookies odds, or four to seven even. So um, Chelsea are now two to one. So it looks like it's a two-way battle between us and Chelsea. Now, Chelsea are in the process, it seems, of a bit of a clear out. Um, new manager Sarri is in. They brought in Jorginho, but, you know, it looks like well, I mean, Kante is going to move away, Williams is going to move away, Eden Hazard could move. But obviously the big one in terms of this goalkeeping situation is Thibaut Courtois. Now, get French Football News are reporting via RMC, actually. So RMC have actually been pretty good this summer. I think they were one of the first um, outlets to the Fabinho news, and they've been pretty you know, respectable so far. Um, I mean, I, I used to always laugh at French and Italian media, but so far this summer, uh, they seem to be doing just, just as well as the, the UK press. So... Uh, a 35 million euro agreement between Chelsea and Real Madrid uh, for the transfer of Thibaut Courtois, four year contract. So we know Courtois' contract's coming to an end in uh, a year's time. Chelsea obviously looking to cash in now if he's not going to stick around. He didn't want a new contract. So Madrid and Courtois looks like a match made in heaven. Obviously Chelsea need a replacement. And the only real you know, elite goalkeeper on the market uh, looks to be Alisson. Um, so... It really is a two-way battle. It said that he prefers a move to Liverpool. Um, I mean, if you look at the two options uh, on paper, you've got Liverpool Champions League football. He soaked in that atmosphere last year against us. Um, you know, when he came to Anfield and the five-two, it was an amazing atmosphere. Um, he saw us go to the Champions League final. He knows that we are progressing under Jurgen Klopp. Two top four finishes in a row. Champions League finals, playing amazing football, um, signing top players. We're just moving in. We're definitely moving in the right direction. Then you've got Chelsea, who you never really know where you stand with them in terms of where they're going to be uh, at the end of the season. They they're probably more likely to win a league than us, but they're also more likely to completely falter and be nowhere to be seen and not even make the Champions League. Um, although this season maybe it's different. Maybe we're more likely to win the league. The bookies certainly think we're more likely than, than them to ch challenge. But are they going to pay more wages than us? Are they going to... Well, obviously it's London, you know. No matter what you, you might think, London is a bigger attraction to players, some players, than Liverpool. Um, so it's, you know, you, you can make an argument for a player wanting to go to either. Obviously, Jorginho picked... City over, uh, sorry, Chelsea over City in the end. So it looks like he wants to come to Liverpool though. So let's just hope that we don't get completely gazumped by Chelsea financially in terms of the bid we put uh, that they put in. Uh, Roman might not accept ours; they might accept theirs, and the contract is put on the table. But I mean, honestly, it's such a relief. Even if we don't get Allison, the fact that we've put in a sixty-two million pound bid for a goalkeeper, which would smash the world record just proves how important this uh, is to Jurgen Klopp. Um, as I said, right at the start of pre-season, I was okay. I was okay with Karras. Um, and I'm probably going to have to hold my hand up and say I was wrong based on how he's looked 
even in a couple of preseason games, how he's looked, and you know, just kind of thinking about it. Obviously, we're we're better off with Allison. I still thought we could challenge with Karis. I really did because look, we've challenged with Mignolet. We've we've we got so far with Karis in the Champions League last season, and he did play well in the second half of the campaign. And I would have been able to talk myself into Danny Ward because at least it would have been a new pair of hands. It would have been a fresh start for somebody. But having said that, when you see that we've put a bid in for Allison. Um, you know, one of the best goalkeepers in Serie A last season, Brazilian international, number one, um, and obviously so highly rated and so highly coveted by Europe's elite. If we were to bring him in, um, obviously Nabo Fakir, who I'll get onto shortly as well, then it's honestly, if it's honestly the most exciting squad or the most complete squad. You could argue we'd maybe be one centre back short and maybe a backup striker short of borderline perfection as a Liverpool squad. But I mean, we'd be pretty damn close, you know? Um, we know. So we know we want a number 10, we know we want a goalkeeper. Klopp has gone out and put a bid in, well, he's, you know, we're pretty close to signing each of those positions, you know, Alisson, Fakir. Um, a centre-back, I saw somewhere that it's basically just gonna be, it would be a bonus, you know, I've seen Harry Maguire linked. I've, I've, I've made my feelings on him clear, but you know, if we do get a centre-back, then, then great. If we, if we can upgrade on, on Clavin um, or, or Matip, then, then fantastic. But yeah, the, the priority is obviously the goalkeeper. And yeah, what do you think? Do you think we can land this Brazilian international for what's going to be probably around the mid-60s? Um, it's hugely expensive, but God, would it be worth it? So let's look at Chris Bascom's uh, Telegraph piece. Um, we've put in a £62 million bid. Alisson has been Klopp's target, also our number one target, um, with the situation growing in urgency um, after Loris Karras' Champions League display. Roma have been valuing him at 75 million euros. Chelsea are also keen. Um, criticism on Karras, yada, yada, yada. But Klopp was already planning on getting a new keeper anyway, or is considering it. Um, we tried to inquire for Alisson in January, but that was rebuffed. Um, Klopp has remained publicly in support of Karras. Um, but yes, he's saying here, uh, the offer here demonstrates how keen Klopp is to remedy the situation ahead of the Premier League campaign. And yes, and as soon as possible at that. Um, we obviously don't know what's going to happen with Courtois. It looks like he's going to go to Real Madrid. Have Chelsea got anyone else in mind? Um, I don't know. But what we do know is Liverpool are very much in the market for a goalkeeper. Whether there is an alternative, we'll have to wait and see. You know, If Chelsea get their man and we don't, is there a plan B or is this a him or bust situation? I mean, the drop-off from breaking the world record and getting a goalkeeper that we think would be a safe pair of hands, I mean... Um, I've probably said before that um, do do I know that Alisson is that great? No, I don't. But you know, I've not been watching him intently like our scouting department obviously have been. I saw a couple of games in Serie A where I thought it was very, very good. I saw him a couple of times against Liverpool where I didn't think he was that good. You know, he didn't make a save of note. And I saw him in the World Cup where he did nothing wrong, but he didn't stand out particularly. So um, I've not seen him do anything really, 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 really wrong uh, when I've watched him, but I have seen him have very, very good games in Syria. Um, but, you know, it's not. I'm not part of the scouting team. I'm not the man that's qualified to make these sort of verdicts on goalkeepers. He is obviously very, very good if Liverpool are this intent, and Chelsea are this intent, on signing him. So, the drop-off from that to Karius, who can't catch a ball at the moment, is huge. Obviously, as I said, I did say that I'd be okay with Karius, but now that I've kind of weighed up this proposition and us having an actual potentially world-class goalkeeper between the sticks to kind of put us on a par with the other teams in the top six Premier League in terms of having an elite goalkeeper then the rest of it will take care of itself we've got the best strike force in the league you know arguably we've now got one of the best mid midfields in the league and the defense is brilliant now with, with Van Dijk settled in there Robertson and Trent being great attacking fullbacks it's all kind of falling into place uh, Nadio Fakir as well Still very much a possibility, maybe even probable now. So, I mean, why would you not be excited right now? Today is a great day. I thought it was going to be a stupendous day. I thought we were going to get the, the Fabinho thing where Italian media kick off, or you know, in Fabinho's case it was French, but the foreign media kick off, then the Merseyside journalists, then a deal agreed, and then the announcement. I thought that was all going to happen today, but um, yeah, that's, not going to, that's not going to be the case. Unless, you know, unless we get at 9 o'clock, you never know. Um, but Nabil Fakir, let's, let's talk about him. So... 
It's all seemed quite positive in recent days. Um, ITK accounts, French ITK accounts on Twitter, um, various French reporters just kind of saying, even, I mean, even Martin Tyler, as you would have seen, sort of suggesting that there'll be a restructuring of a deal and we'll get our man. Um, it will just be paid depending on when he plays and stuff like that. So the latest from RMC, as a, you know, again, reliable at the moment. Um, Negotiating a deal for Fakir will be difficult because of their Liverpool's previous attempts to lower the price over the Frenchman's medical history and because President Aula is in a position to ask for even more money now that Fakir is a World Cup winner. Now, I don't really buy that. I mean, I've been joking about Fakir becoming a World Cup winner, but he came on for about 10 minutes in every game and was hardly a huge contributor. Um, reporter Loic Tanzel claimed this evening that Liverpool have played a bad hand and that their previous tactics could certainly come back to bite them. I just don't buy it. Um, which is kind of picking and choosing because I am choosing to buy other things that RMC say when it fits what I want to hear. But um, it would be strange for for this to come back and bite us. I mean, all that we've heard is that, I mean, it's perfectly legitimate for us to try and restructure a deal if there is such a big concern. If the guy literally failed as medical, then we were well within our rights. And I don't think Aula could have any complaints that we had a few reservations and walked away from the table or at least hesitated. So we'll see what happens with that. Again, leave a comment with your thoughts. Do you think we'll get Alisson? Do you think we'll get Fakir? Do you think we'll get anyone else? Um, I think, oh, I don't, do you know what? I don't even want to make a prediction, but you're all going to ask me in the comments anyway. Okay, prediction, we'll get both. Why not? We will get both Alisson and Abu Fakir, and then that will put us in such a strong position. If that is all the business we do this summer, then I'm absolutely fine with that because that would feel... Like, so many weights lifted off our, sh off our shoulders. For so long there was a centre-back we needed, we got it uh, in Van Dijk. For so long we needed to improve our midfield, we've done it with Fabinho, with Keita. Um, we've got so much depth in that position now. We needed to improve our attack. Um, we've added Shaqiri for depth, perfect. We've always needed that in the, in the two most recent seasons where we've done really well. Um, last season and 13-14, we've not had any depth at all, so adding that. Great, and then Nabu Fakir becomes a possibility, whether he plays in that front three or whether he plays in midfield or whether it's a combination of all of it. We've got so much strength there, and suddenly Liverpool have got a great squad. That's always been the biggest criticism. Um, obviously, we're fighting on four fronts again next season, so we need a big squad, and we could well have it if we can just get these deals over the line. I'm smiling. I'm smiling with excitement um, because Liverpool are showing ambition, something I criticised them for in the past, something you will criticise them for in the past. Um, yeah, I mean, there you go, that is it. Um, Salah new contract, Shakiri, Fabinho, Keita, and if we can just get Fakir and Alisson, then, you know, Premier League title could, could be a possibility. Um, why not dare to dream? Guys, subscribe to the channel for more uh, of this sort of thing. I'm obviously gonna be on top of all of this and follow me on Instagram. I always say all my social platforms, but make sure in particular that you follow me on Instagram. As Ben might say, for all the latest, I'm always doing lives and polls and whatever on Instagram. So make sure you're over there. I'll see you next time.